everyone. I'm Donna Bush with your CIG TV News update this Thursday. Members of Cabinet have approved the release of the strategic outline case for a long-term residential mental health facility, which has the potential to end the practice of sending persons overseas for such treatment. Now, some of the options identified by the committee and included in the case study are maintaining the existing situation with no changes, or keeping things as they are, but hiring clinical case managers to monitor patients in the United States and Jamaica. Other options are on an, an, are an un-island facility with 30 to 40 beds for local patients only, or a larger uh, facility that would cater to local and overseas patients, or simply tendering the service out. Now, government will shortly publish a request for proposals for a cons consultant to develop the outline business case, which will work strategically and through public consultation to identify the preferred option for going forward with the procurement following the award of this contract. Work on the OBC is scheduled to begin in late 2015 and continue into early 2016. Minister of Health and Premier the Honorable Alden McLaughlin commented that the construction of a long-term residential mental health facility would contribute to government's core objectives. Now, if you're interested in reviewing the SOC or want more details on the plans, you're encouraged to visit the Ministry of Health's website on ministryofhealth.gov.ky. Well, today, Minister of Education, the Honorable Tara Rivers, and other education officials were part of a press briefing on the public consultation process for the Education Bill 2015. The purpose of the briefing, attended by members of the local press, was to provide the following. Why new legislation of education is necessary, the process that has been undertaken to produce the law and supporting legislation, and the key features of the law and their impl implications for education. In the 2010 McKinsey and Companies report, how the world's most improved school systems keep getting better. And in many instances, that particular report can be seen as a as a benchmark review analyzing education systems around the world, including Singapore, Hong Kong, Canada, Germany, and England, to name a few. That report specifically outlines a number of key initiatives and um, interventions that were needed in order for these systems to move from poor to fair, fair to good, good to great, great to excellent. And so we are making sure that our push and our um, vision aligned with what was international best practice. It was important from, from our perspective as well, because as I said, we compete globally right here in the Cayman Islands, so we need to make sure that our education system reflects the global best practices as well. And you can watch the entire press briefing only here on CIG TV tonight at 8 o'clock. Well, Justin Ebanks is named government's top employee for the month of March. According to his clients and staff, Justin's delivery of high-quality service is an important trait that sets him apart. For this and other qualities, the Needs Assessment Unit's higher executive officer has been recognized as a top civil servant. Deputy Governor Franz Manderson congratulated him on his ability to multitask and credited him as one of the primary officers who ensured the unit remained operational despite relocating challenges. Mr. Ebanks shrugs off his accomplishments, instead crediting his team for their solid performance. Of course, we say congratulations to Justin Ebanks. Meantime, the Ministry of Youth continues to support the annual Talent Exposition of the Arts. This year, the Night of Performances from Local Artists takes place on June 28th at the Harkwell Theater. Tickets are on sale at Funky Tanks and Reflections. The show consists of performances from some of Cayman's rising stars, and it promises, as in past years, to be a night of enjoyment for all who attend. If you missed our news update today, you can get all the details on our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to tune into Radio Cayman's talk shows. That's talk, uh, talk Today and For the Record. Those shows take place week mornings and weekdays. For now, I'm Donna Bush, as always, thanking you for joining us, wishing you a wonderful night, and hoping you'll join us here again on Friday evening. Until then, bye-bye for now.